You have one camera and one shot of your footage. You can still make your videos visually interesting, and I'll show you how. Hey everyone, it's Mike from Big Bite, and editing is such a powerful tool. I love DaVinci Resolve because it's free, and well, I think it's freaking awesome. I was watching a video from Guitar Mastery Method and loved how he showed how he was playing guitar. At first I thought he must be using multiple cameras because of the angle of the guitar, but I quickly recognized how wrong I was. He's using the same footage that's cropped, enlarged, and arranged differently. I wanted to show you with a short clip how you could take something that is relatively boring and make it visually interesting with dynamic zooms and that neat little scene we saw before. Let's jump into Resolve and get right to it. All right, so now we are in Resolve and I am on the edit workflow. And here you can see I just have one single clip of me playing guitar and I'll scroll through it real fast so you can see how boring it is. In fact, I don't even have any effects on my guitar. So it doesn't even sound that good. So we need to make this more interesting. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually cut up this clip based on the music or based on the audio. Um, and so to do this, I'm just gonna use the blade tool, but I'm a big fan of keyboard shortcuts. And this is how you're gonna get better and faster at editing. So I'm going to be using Control B on Windows to cut up this clip. And I'll be using the space bar to start, uh, excuse me, to start and stop the clip. I'm going to do that effect on this clip here. So the first thing I'm going to do since I don't want to duplicate the audio is unlink the video and audio clips by right clicking and then selecting link clips. Well, deselecting because it's currently checked off. Now you'll see the little chain link um, icons disappear from the bottom and these are disconnected. So now I can move this video clip around and the audio clip is unaffected. So with this video clip selected, I'm going to just do control C to copy it. And then since this is gonna paste in video one, I'm just gonna move this up to video two and make sure this is actually going to paste wherever you have your uh, timeline icon. So just make sure you align it back to, you know, this actual clip where it starts and then press control V to paste. So I'm actually gonna do that one more time by just dragging this up to then video three coming back here and then selecting paste. So now we have all three of the same exact clip stacked on top of each other. This is exactly what we want because now we could go ahead and enlarge or zoom in on the footage, also crop it and then even move it around uh, to where we need it so that we could build out our layout of my picking hand, me playing and then the fretboard underneath. So I'm gonna start with this top clip here and this I'm going to make um, focusing on my picking hand right here and I'm gonna have this in the top left um, probably not halfway on the screen but probably a little bit more over to the left um, so the first thing I'm going to do is select this clip and then zoom in uh, to get the right footage that I want so typically I'm not recording in 4k I'm recording in 1080p so I don't like to zoom in more than uh, times two but we'll have to see how this looks. Uh, so now I'm just gonna adjust the position and really move this up. And I think that's actually pretty good as far as the zoom and the frame that I want. So you can still see uh, the start of the guitar. In fact, I'm, maybe I'll shift it over just a little bit more. So now I'm going to select cropping and I need to crop it, well, only really from the right. So that's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna select crop right and then start to drag this over and you'll see that it will start to crop our image. So I'm thinking somewhere about here is gonna look good. So I'll leave that there. Next, we're gonna select on the video clip underneath and this I'm gonna have be the fretboard that's gonna span the entire bottom side of the screen, or bottom part of the screen, I should say. So just like before, I'm going to zoom and kind of position the footage where I want it to get the neck of the guitar. So I'm going to zoom in um, 
I'm just gonna keep it at two and I'll position it right here. Uh, so you will see some of that the headstock um, But I like the headstock of this guitar so it all works out So just like before we need to crop this only we need to crop it from the top instead of the right So I'm gonna come over here to crop top and Just start dragging this until it cuts my image where I want it And I am actually gonna leave this little space in between these so you could see the third clip underneath right now because I'm gonna use this as uh, like a black bar separator um, to kind of split up the other uh, video footage. So for this final block, I'm actually gonna have to zoom out, which has been very different compared to what we've done before. So I'm gonna try it at 0.6 or 60% at first. I wanna make sure we go all the way to the edge of the screen. And I wanna make sure that I am centered. So I'm gonna actually move this up just to get this even black bar across. And now I'm gonna wanna crop this uh, from the left to get a, that little bit of black space in between these two clips here. So the one last thing that I don't really like about this to be honest, is these black lines here. I would prefer them to be a different color to maybe pop and not just kind of blend in so much. If you think about what we want to do to get this, we really want to make it so that the bottom layer is whatever color that we want these lines to be. So to do this, I'm just going to click and drag and I'm just going to kind of click outside of these clips and drag to select all three. Uh, you could also just select them individually and hold control or even select the top one and hold shift and click the bottom one and it will select the whole stack. Then I'm actually going to just drag all of these clips up one. So now we have video four, three, two, and then a video one. And just so I don't mess anything up, I'm going to bring over this uh, timeline marker kind of towards the end. And we're going to go to the effects library and then click on generators down here. So this on the generators, you can see if you kind of hover, it'll give you a preview. Uh, this is how you get all those color bars and all that fun stuff. And we've used this four color gradient before in the past, but I really don't want this to be a gradient um, nor a grayscale. Uh, really, I'd like it to be a solid color. Um, the thing is, what I like to use, especially if it's white, uh, just for a little bit of depth and some texture, is this paper fusion generator. Uh, so I'm just gonna click and drag this one out here, and then I'll drag it in my timeline where I need it to be and fully extend it. So now if I click on here, now you can see those black lines have now turned into that white paper, uh, kind of like depthy effect. Really, you could change this to whatever color you want. Uh, you could even use an image, uh, depending on how you're setting everything up. So now we need to make the other clips interesting, and we're gonna do this with dynamic zooms and panning from left to right. Um, so I'm gonna kick this off by probably being zoomed in and zooming out, and then we could kind of switch over to some pans and, and things and, and alternate from there. Uh, so let's do the dynamic zoom on the first clip. So I'm going to click on effects library and media pool up here just to enlarge our timeline since I don't need any of that stuff. And I'm going to select on the first clip. Over here, I'm gonna to toggle dynamic zoom. And this is currently set to linear, which, uh, well, let's see how this looks. Actually looks pretty good, I'm okay with linear. Um, you could play around and, and select your different effects to see if you want to use ease in and out, for example, and that'll look like this. Um, however, for this one, I actually think maybe an ease in will look good. Let's try this. In fact, I actually even kind of like it just chilling here for a second. So I'm gonna select this third clip and this third clip is where I'm gonna add in a pan from left to right. So again, if you think about what we have to do for this, we need 
extra space on both the left and right side of our clip so that we could actually start on the left and move over to the right and not run out of footage. So we're gonna have to zoom in on this clip first. Hmm. You know, sometimes when you make content, things don't go according to plan. So I uh, found out that most of my recording for the next part didn't quite work, so I'm re-recording it now. So if things look different, well, that's why. Also, I did end up re-recording the guitar clip that I'm editing because I decided to make a backtrack to make it a little bit better as well. So yeah, anywho, let's go show you how to do that pan effect, and then I'll show you the final product. Okay, so this is the clip that I'm looking to pan from left to right. So the first thing I'm going to do is zoom in. So I am just going to zoom in 20%. Uh, that should just give us some space to the left and space to the right to work with. And then I'm just gonna move this image up just a little bit just to get more of the guitar into the clip. So I'm actually going to come uh, right as this scene first starts. And I usually like to just hit the, the right arrow just to kind of uh, jump in a frame to make sure that I am in this clip. And then I'm going to click on this diamond next to position to set a keyframe. And so from here, I'm just going to shift this as far as I can. Uh, probably about right here looks good. So I like to keep it even, so I'll do 185. And by even, I'm talking about more like whole numbers rather than fractions. Uh, and then I'm going to just skip over to the end and then press the left arrow to make sure I'm on this clip. And I will click on the keyframe again. And for this, this should be pretty easy since everything was centered beforehand. So if I just make this negative 185, it should move me all the way to the other side. So this default behavior is going to be linear and I kind of want an ease in and ease out effect. So to do this, I'm going to come down here and click on this little like curve icon here. And right now it's on position X. If it's not, you could click that little drop down and just make sure position X is selected. And this will actually show you um, your position X and I'll show at 185 and this will show you what the numeric value is all the way up until the next keyframe here at negative 185. So I'm just gonna click on this node and you'll see it's on the linear option, which is a straight line. And then we have this curved option right here. I'm just gonna click on that. And now you can see I have this toggle where I can move up and down. I'm gonna keep it where it is though, because that's gonna be your standard ease in. And if I do it over here, that will be your standard ease out. Now to close this menu, I'll just go ahead and click on this curve icon and there we go. So let's see how this looks. Beautiful. So before I show you the final product, please go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if this has helped you out at all. And go ahead and subscribe if you're interested in more DaVinci Resolve tutorials and content about content creation. So let's go ahead and check out the final product and thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy it.